I love hemodynamics, and today I'm going to give you the cheat code to understand all of hemodynamics, to be a true master at resuscitation, and that's to understand the right ventricle. The right ventricle is one of the least respected parts of the hemodynamic system. Everyone always says left ventricle this and left ventricle that. The left ventricle, pfft. It's easy, but when you really understand the right ventricle and the pulmonary arterial system, and you learn how to resuscitate that system, you will become a true resuscitation Jedi. Now there's a couple things we have to know about the right ventricle. The first thing is the shape. The shape of the RV, well, it's weird. It's complex, it's three-dimensional. It's not like that conical cone head shape like the LV. No, it's different. It's kind of like a, well, it's sort of like, um, all right, I can't really draw it, but if you go to this website, and type in 3D RV, you'll get some nice renderings of how it looks and it'll all make sense. The other thing to know about the RV is it's thin walled and the RV PA system, well, it's a low resistance and low pressure system. And what that basically means is that the RV, it's kind of chill. It doesn't like a lot of stress. It doesn't like any acute events happening. It doesn't do well with acute overload of fluids. It doesn't do well with acute pressure overloads. Like if you have an acute PE or for some reason you have an acute constriction of the pulmonary arteries, but over time, it does adapt. So if you have somebody that has chronic pulmonary hypertension, well, that RV free wall will get much thicker. But acutely when it's stressed, the RV doesn't do well with things. It can in fact go into failure and hemodynamic collapse. And that's why it's so important to know about this right ventricle right here. The RV, it's very nuanced. It's very particular. So it's different than the left ventricle. Not that I'm playing favorites here. I love both ventricles. The RV also has some important subtleties that you need to know. The first is coronary filling is very different for the right ventricle as opposed to the left ventricle. The right ventricle fills during diastole and systole, while the simple LV just fills during diastole. This is gonna be important later on. The other fun fact to know about the right ventricle is that it doesn't tolerate atrial fibrillation very well. So if you have right ventricular failure and you have AFib, this can greatly compromise the hemodynamics because the right ventricle really likes that atrial kick. If you have somebody who comes in and they have right ventricular failure and they're in atrial fibrillation, cardioverting them immediately may help to resuscitate them. This is much different than the left ventricle where we can tolerate AFib for certain periods of time. The RV is really sensitive and that right side circulation needs that atrial kick, so keep that in mind. The other thing to remember is the relation of the RV to the LV. If this is your pericardial space and we kind of slice it right down the middle, it's the LV and the RV, not drawn to scale. And what you have here is the interventricular septum. This septum stays concave with respect to the LV during systole and diastole normally. However, when you have someone who's going into RV failure, let's say from a massive PE, what winds up happening is that your RV now starts to become circular and you start to get the LV like this. Notice what's happening here? That interventricular septum is now shifting over and bowing into that LV. This not only hurts the performance of the RV during systole, but it also encroaches on the amount of filling that can happen in the LV. And if you decrease the filling of the LV, then you decrease cardiac output. This leads to shock and all sorts of badness. All right, look, I know I said a lot of stuff and some of that stuff might seem like it's all over the place, but it's very, very important to understand all those little bits of facts and we're gonna put them together right here in what is known as the RV death, death, death spiral. 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 So let's take a scenario where you have somebody who has an acute PE. And let's just say it's a really large PE. That PE gets lodged in the pulmonary artery, increases the afterload that that right ventricle is seeing. And we said that RV doesn't really like acute rises in pressure. And what will happen is that that RV tries to compensate a little bit and it goes and dilates on you. As that RV dilates, there's a lot of tension on the wall of the ventricle. What that means is it compresses those coronary arteries and pinches them in there that are perfusing that right ventricular free wall. And this causes a decrease in perfusion. And that means that there's more ischemia. As that RV becomes more ischemic, what do you think happens? There's gonna be a decrease in contractility because there's less blood flow, because there's less perfusion. As that RV doesn't contract as well, it means that there's a decrease in cardiac output that goes to the LV. That means there's a decrease in cardiac output systemically. And if there's a decrease in cardiac output systemically, that means there's a reduction in our mean arterial pressure. If there's a reduction in the mean arterial pressure, well, that means there's a decrease in coronary perfusion. And sure, that's bad for the LV because it gets its 
perfusion during diastole, but it's really bad for the RV because it gets perfusion during systole and diastole. And so what do you think happens to that RV? Well, it gets more ischemia, which leads to decreased contractility, which leads to decreased filling of the LV, which eventually leads to cardiogenic shock and ultimately death. And that's not good. Now in the next episode, we're going to talk about some of the things that can cause problems to the right ventricle and the pulmonary system and how you can fix that. But for now, let's just review what we talked about. Remember, if you want to know hemodynamics, you have to understand the RV and the pulmonary system inside and out. It's the cheat code. It's the secret to hemodynamics. Know that the right side of the heart is a low resistance, low pressure system. And anything that disrupts that is going to cause a problem with hemodynamics. And if you have a problem with hemodynamics on the right side, you're going to have a decreased filling in hemodynamics on the left side. It's like the left side can't be without the right side. Aww. Know that the RV doesn't like acute increases in pressure. It can't handle it. Know that it doesn't like increases in volume. It can't handle it. Know that it doesn't like increases in resistance. It can't handle it. So if any of these happen acutely, the RV will not be able to handle it. Over time with chronic changes, the RV will adapt and become hypertrophied. But for the purposes of this cripits, we're just going to be talking about the acute problems. The RV gets perfused during systole and diastole, and it's very sensitive to increases in wall tension when there's an acute dilation or stretch of the free wall where those coronary arteries are perfusing. And then finally, the RV and the LV, well, they're neighbors and they share that interventricular septum. And when the RV bows over into the LV, this can affect the filling of the LV, thus the hemodynamics, thus the cardiac output. And that goes back to that whole RV, RV death, death spiral, 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 spiral that we spoke yeah, about before. Spiral. And we'll be talking about that a little later on in the next Crip Bits. So don't forget to subscribe to the channel so you don't miss the next episode or any of the other episodes that we're offering. Oh yeah, and don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it. That's what I got for you today. Thanks for watching.